We live in a fast paced world and over time things change and it happens all so rapidly. And we also live in a world in which inherent bias is built in. So you like a character based on looks or gender or just powers. And also we live in a one piece world in which portrayal is very important. So based on like how our character is portrayed, you view that as a major thing and you kind of use that as a indicator on how strong a character should be. And sometimes you're not always right. At the beginning of one piece, it all felt so small. It felt like the top of the part world was probably Probably Smoker at the time because Luffy couldn't touch Smoker because he was Smoke. At that time, he wondered how Luffy would overcome Smoker. And looking back on it, Smoker is just the tip of the iceberg. So now it brings us here to the point where we're seeing Yonko go against commanders and has given us an accurate scale or somewhat of an accurate scale of where the Yonko are in comparison to some of the commanders. Now, this isn't a video where we're going to talk about the Yonkos versus the commanders. This is a video in which we're going to talk about the Yonko versus the Yonko because honestly, Big Mom is building a case as to why she should be heralded as the strongest Yonko. Now there's a saying that you don't have to be the prettiest girl in town when you're the only girl in town. So for Big Mom, she's the Yonko who we've seen a lot or most of her techniques or strength. And for the others, we haven't seen that much. The only other Yonko in which we've seen as much as Big Mom is Whitebeard. And Whitebeard we know at the time was old and sick. But Big Mom isn't a spring chicken herself. She is what, 68 years old? And can we count Big Mom with her hunger pangs as sick? I think I think based on everything Big Mom has shown, it's not a massive leap to say she's the strongest Yonko. Most people don't have Big Mom as their strongest Yonko due to, again, portrayal and how they see the series playing out, which of course, there's nothing wrong with that. However, once things start to play out, do you change how you feel about things? Do you change how you see things playing out? In chapter one, it showed that Shanks would be an important character throughout the story. However, seeing Shanks again and finding out that he was indeed a Yonko, one of the four greatest pirates in One Piece, it was surprising because I did not expect him to be of that level. The main character always has ties to incredibly strong people. That's just a trope of shonen protagonists. You can go back to Naruto, Bleach, My Hero Academia, there's always a tie to very strong characters. I definitely did not foresee it being Shanks. Of course, Luffy is tied to several strong characters, his dad, his grandfather, obviously Shanks. But Shanks from chapter one, and as things has progressed through the story, is shown as an end game character or a character that is going to be there for the long haul. And he has, we're 900 chapters in and we haven't seen much from Shanks. However, for most, including myself, Shanks is the strongest Yonko. I think Shanks being as regular as he is says a lot about him. Shanks is the most regular person of that group. He doesn't have a devil fruit. He's not overwhelmingly large. He's just a fun loving guy or menace when he needs to be. So for someone of that regularity to stand with the monsters of Big Mom, Whitebeard, Blackbeard, and Kaido, it has to be something special about him. I think we also put Shanks on that pedestal is because we see a bit of Rayleigh in Shanks. Of course, Rayleigh is known as the Dark King and for Rayleigh, being as strong as he is, we feel like Shanks is going to be the same way. To compensate for devil fruit mastery and devil fruit power, you become a hockey master. You master your technical aspects of your fighting style. It doesn't matter how good you are at hockey. If you get a devil fruit, to train that devil fruit is going to take away from your hockey usage and mastery and also different fighting styles. You can incorporate your devil fruit into your fighting style. However, if you did not have your devil fruit, inherently your other techniques would be stronger. So for Shanks, not having a devil fruit for all his life, how he's trained, how he's prepared has gotten him to this point in which his techniques are probably at the pinnacle of One Piece. We presume Shanks to have the strongest hockey we have ever seen in the series, and we saw how overwhelming Rayleigh can be with hockey. Pre time skip, Devil Fruit was the thing. Devil Fruits were overpowered. We didn't know how we were going to overcome Devil Fruits. Having a Devil Fruit was a hax. Post time skip, hockey has been the great equalizer. Not having hockey, and you're sure to meet a certain doom. And I think, in a way, hockey has been somewhat overpowered if you can master it. You have hockey that can see into the future. You have hockey that can penetrate even the greatest of defenses. You have hockey that can be the greatest of defenses. Mastering hockey compensates so much for not having the power of the sea devil, so we place Shanks on that scale. Another factor is that he's somewhat the loose rival of the world's greatest swordsman. Again, that speaks to his technical savvy and his skill with the blade. So for him being as
best skill with the blade and presumably being the hockey master that we expect him to be, how can you not have Shanks very high on your list? Also going to stop Kaido, stopping the Marine Ford War, there are things there to indicate that Shanks could indeed be the strongest Yonko. For Kaido, we don't have to go too much into it, but he is the world's strongest creature. We know what he can do. We know what he's capable of. Luffy does as well. For Blackbeard, he currently is sporting two devil fruits. We recently saw in the anime that Blackbeard seemingly took out the remnants of the Whitebeard pirates by himself. That's how they're somewhat portraying it. We know that the others helped, of course, but Blackbeard and how he's able to use his fruit as portrayed in the anime is overpowering. He is now able to combine darkness with the earthquake. How do you really stop that? That is overpowered. Now for Big Mom, and the reason why we could herald Big Mom as the strongest Yonko is several factors. One, Big Mom as a child. Since Big Mom was six years old, Mother Caramel said that Big Mom had the potential to be Fleet Admiral. As impressive as these other Yonkos are, and again, we don't know their entire backstory, I doubt any of them were as strong as Big Mom when they were her age. At six, she had a 50 million berry bounty. We saw her again at a very young age at a 500 million berry bounty. Big Mom had her first kid at 18 years old and pretty much the entirety of her prime has been pregnant and has been running shit this entire time. Big Mom has insane durability, overwhelming strength, an impregnable defense, a top tier devil fruit, and again, a menacing attitude. I think if you look at it from apples to apples, Big Mom's strength and defense is on par with any of the other Yonko from what we've seen so far. I don't think Kaido is that much stronger than Big Mom physically. I don't think his defense is that much better than Big Mom's. Out of all the Yonko, Big Mom is the only one to not have any scars. Blackbeard as well, but we saw all the damage that Blackbeard took during his ascension. Big Mom has no noticeable scars, and again, her feet from this recent chapter should not be overlooked. Big Mom currently cannot use her devil fruit, is out of her mind, and has reverted back to her childlike state. Again, you could say this is the most dangerous Big Mom you could ever get because she has no filter or limiter on her strength currently, but Big Mom went into it and fought a second commander and gave him a two-piece and he was out. He wanted no more chicken. That's what Big Mom essentially did with no devil fruit and no haki. I would think other Yonkos would be able to do that, but take away Blackbeard's darkness fruit and his quake fruit. Is he still beating Ace? For Shanks being a hockey master, that's a toss-up. For Kaido, it seems like Kaido went through a level of growth because he was rivals with Moria at one point. Again, you don't have to be equal to be rivals, but to be rivals with Moria, mm, not as impressive. Even though I think Moria is a lot stronger than most do. I think Big Mom's narrative is skewed by the fact that she's the first Yonko that we actually saw in her territory, in battle, going through a lot of shit. Of course, Whitebeard, that was a whole different scenario because it was war, but we've had to see Big Mom defend her territory or try to defend her territory and ultimately fail against the Straw Hats. Again, no one beats plot. So at that point, Big Mom was destined to fail. But even if you go beyond the actual character, let's go beyond Big Mom. Let's look at the people around Big Mom. Big Mom seemingly has the best crew or the best collection of individuals following her. We don't know much about Shanks' crew and we know Shanks' people are going to be insanely powerful. However, Big Mom has a lot of useful devil fruit users and strong people around her. Her family is extremely impressive. One can say that Big Mom so far, in Whole Cake Island, the kids of Big Mom has been more impressive than the Flying Six and Kaido's Beast Pirates. Wano isn't finished, so it is an unfair comparison. However, we gotta look at what it is. Big Mom checks every box when it comes to being a Yonko. I also wanna go into the fact why I think Big Mom is the best Yonko for the story, but that's a separate video. I think also, honestly, for Big Mom, it's easy to overlook her because of how Oda kinda treats her character. He uses her in situations in which she can be seen as a gimmick or as a plot point to progress whatever he has going on in the story but i think big mom based on her character she's flexible and she's made for that i view big mom in the way oda uses sanji and of course people think sanji's joke as well i mean i don't think so but oda has certain characters in which he can use them in different ways as far as it could be comedy it could be it being serious but he has specific characters in which they're malleable they're not so one-dimensional that if they're used in a different scenario or in a different way you view it outside of the norm i think in most comedic instances out of the monster to you of course Sanji and Luffy are used that way and Zoro not so much of course Zoro's comedic moments come from him just being fed up and just lashing out against them but it's not nearly as frequent as when Sanji and Luffy they have their gags Zoro is more so a serious headstrong character with Sanji of course he has his gag as far as his love for women being a chivalrous guy so it's Sanji and his character is flexible not saying it's a great thing I think sometimes it's done well same thing for Big Mom and for Kaido comedy it comes from him being a drunk but of course he is normally the badass Shanks is the same way, of course he's used in different moments, but he is the badass. Blackbeard, he's used in different moments, 
but he is also a malleable character in which Oda puts him in comedic situations, but overall, he's not the same that Big Mom has been portrayed to be. I know the run-in joke is that Big Mom is Big Mean, like she's used as a character that Oda just throws in whenever he needs something to happen, and you can argue Udon was just there for her to progress the plot. That's fair, but as Big Mom has been built up to be this childlike character, this is kind of expected for her. There are going to be instances where things happen that are just unexplained that we really can't decipher why she did this or why this happened. I think that's been the story of Big Mom's character throughout the series. Everything for her has somewhat been unorthodox, right? From how she obtained her devil fruit, to how her parents just left her with random people, with how she grew up with giants, while it's not being a giant herself, with how she viewed different scenarios and how she tried to fix them by being too forceful or being too overpowered. Big Mom is not an orthodox character. And I think how Oda uses her, sometimes it's not viewed in a positive light because that's not what we expect of someone of that stature, someone that powerful. That that's just how it's gonna play out. And I think we gotta look at it from this perspective. As far as Luffy, when Luffy becomes a Yonko, and some people view him as a Yonko now, I don't. When I say Yonko, an established Yonko, a verified Yonko, when he gets that check mark, if Oda goes this route of somebody invading Luffy's territory or where Luffy is, the Straw Hats, based on how they are, they can be bumbling idiots as well. And Luffy is a bumbling idiot. And as powerful as Luffy is, we saw it in Wano. Otama was stolen from them by Batman and Gazelle Man. Like, it had moments in which we were like, how was this able to happen? happened to Luffy. Like, why is this happening to Luffy? We saw how Monet was able to get Luffy, Caesar, and Big Mom is kind of used in the same way, but of course, because she's a Yonko, we don't expect those things to happen to her. And that takes away from how people portray her as, you know, possibly being the strongest. And of course, people use the narrator's words or the hearsay of you should always bet on Kaido. And, you know, a bet is not a sure thing, but is, you know, it is a high chance and he's probably the favorite going in, but you never know in these things. But I mean, that's pretty much it. But guys, give me your thoughts on what you think about Big Mom. We always felt that Yonko were impressive. But is the narrative changing on Big Mom? Do you view Big Mom any differently from the last chapter? And could Big Mom actually be the strongest Yonko? I think there's a case for that. But leave your thoughts below. For me, it's still Shanks. But leave your thoughts below. Like the video if you did. Be sure to subscribe for more content like this. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs>